Good morning, Zarahemla. I'm Andrew. And I'm Cameron. So good to have you with us again this morning, and we hope you have had an excellent week. Um, last week was an exciting week. We had um, David Bestenlater on to talk about um, Abinadi and the valiant efforts and the missionary efforts that he had. And today we're going to be talking about the one impact that he had when he was um, teaching, which was a huge impact, which is Alma, the older, you know. And so we're going to be talking about Mosiah chapter 18. Cameron, what do you love about Mosiah 18? Well, the one thing I love is how the, how the repentance process of Alma and how quick he was to start teaching the people what he learned. And I love what we learn about baptism as he teaches the people. It's awesome. In the first verse, he, he said, like it says this, it says, Now it came to pass that Alma, who had fled from the servants of King Noah, repented of his sins and iniquities, and went about privately among the people, and began to teach the words of Abinadi. Usually... I would say nowadays it's hard for someone to just like repent and then immediately start teaching people. Um, I, repentance is a, a process that takes a little bit longer, and well, maybe that's what we should be doing. That's something that we should follow Alma and his example. And he teaches the people about how they need to be baptized, and that's one of the most important steps. And in this chapter, we read about the covenants that we make during baptism. Cameron, what are those covenants that we make? I'm going to read a little bit of what he says um, in verse 8 is when he kind of starts. And he's, he's talking to the people about their desires. And he says, if your desire is to come into the fold of God and be called his people, that's one of the covenants where we covenant to be called by the name of Christ. And if you're willing to bear one another's burdens, mourn with those that mourn, and send as a witness of God at all times. Um, so pretty much... We want to witness um, of God and serve others and keep the commandments. That's another part of the covenant. I, I love um, how it's, it's very detailed on what he says. And then at the end, when he talks about the covenants, he, he mentions, he says, why not be baptized? If this is the desire of your heart, why not do this immediately? You know, Why not do this so that the Lord can pour out his spirit upon you? So that's, that's what we have a message to all the people out there that maybe are thinking about getting baptized. I mean, if you have the desire to, to serve God and to be a better person and to join his, his fold, then why not do it? Why not have more blessings come upon you? And after that, many people get baptized. And Alma baptizes a lot of people, and they basically start talking about repentance and faith and organize a church among them, which is really cool. And he talks about the different commandments that they should they should keep, different commandments that they should focus on, like the Sabbath day and just serving others as well so that they can receive the grace of God. One thing that I love about as he's establishing the church and the organization, it says he sets people apart to be the teachers and the priests of the people. He makes he kind of organizes the church. And in verse 18, um, oh, 19, my bad. He says, he commanded them that they should teach nothing, save it were the things which he had taught and which had been spoken by the mouth of the holy prophets. He commanded that they should teach nothing, save it were repentance and faith on the Lord who had redeemed his people. And I think we can apply that to our lives. Our leaders and the prophets and apostles are commanded by God to teach nothing but what Christ has taught and nothing but repentance and doing the things that will help us be redeemed of Christ. Such a such a cool aspect and this is such a powerful chapter in the Book of Mormon and we should always go back to this chapter to look about look look at the covenants that we make during baptism and what we should continue to be doing after baptism. It was amazing. I, I love how in the end, it says, and there were a number about 450 souls. And it says souls, it doesn't say people, first off. And then also, it's just an example of how Abinadi had an impact on so many other people through Alma. And so it's such a cool, such, such, such a cool chapter, such a powerful chapter in the Book of Mormon. And 
sadly we're out of time today, but we are going to be able to talk about Alma's son, Alma the Younger, next week in Mosiah chapter 27 and his conversion process, which is such a powerful, powerful chapter as well. And so we invite you to study up on that and get ready for next week. And we hope you have a wonderful morning, Zarahemla. Ha <laughs> ha.